What's up you guys, it's Joelle and welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who might have been following me for a while now, you'll know that I'm a Dartmouth student, currently taking a gap year, but going back there this upcoming fall. And I love making videos about my school, love my school, and I was just thinking because this upcoming weekend is the winter carnival. For those of you guys who know Dartmouth at all, you'll know that every term we have a big weekend whether it's green key in the spring homecoming in the fall or winter carnival in the winter so i just got me thinking about my favorite dartmouth traditions and whatnot and i thought i'd just make a fun little quick video talking about what some of my favorite ones are and least favorite ones just because it's kind of fun to share these aspects of my college experience that i really enjoy for those of you guys who might be interested in the school and i know every college has their own form of like weird traditions that they do but um, I thought it would just be fun to share some of my experiences, so since I only have one more year of college, well like one and a half, I'm just trying to cherish and really appreciate this time at Dartmouth that I have as a student. Also most of these things I would say they're mostly student done, it's not like a school organized challenge or tradition for any of you guys writing your applications, I would not necessarily mention these because the administration might just be like, what are you talking about? But um, a lot of these challenges are just friends being like, let's do something dumb really late at night uh, and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's, you know, a fun essential part of every college experience. And also don't worry to any Dartmouth students who don't want me to like spill the beans and ruin the surprises for people who are not in the Dartmouth community. And so I know these are very dear to our hearts, but don't worry, I'm not gonna give everything away. <laughs> so there's some things you have to learn just by showing up. So the first most basic challenge that I think is probably the easiest to accomplish is the lose challenge. Lose is the local diner in Hanover, the only one, I think. And it opens at 6 a.m. on the weekdays and 7 a.m. on weekends. And it's a challenge to pull an all-nighter and go to lose delirious and exhausted at 6 a.m. right when it opens and get some delicious breakfast. I've actually done this I think only once on my own accord where um, I was actually up studying though. I wasn't doing anything fun or out with friends. I was with my friend Patrick who was also my UGA and I was working on digital animation homework till like 4 or 5 a.m. and we were just like, well, Lose opens in an hour. I want to just stay up another hour and get food. So that's what we did. It was really sad. The assignment that I was working on also was my worst assignment in that class. Also for sunrise, which is also kind of a Dartmouth tradition or challenge, I would say, to get up at sunrise and go hike a mountain to watch the sunrise. That's always something my friends and I would do during or during finals periods, actually, normally with Thomas, Stefan, and Sean, and we'd get breakfast after sometimes at Lose or at Four Aces or somewhere in town. The 50 is another ridiculous Dartmouth challenge that I don't really understand but groups of kids will go and hike a 50 plus mile hike for you know straight through no rest or anything I don't know how many hours it takes people like around 24 over 24 I don't know totally depends on your group but a lot of kids who are like not super big hikers or anything will do this um, and it's just absurd because people will come back hallucinating and s exhausted and just like complete wrecks and able and unable to walk. But they can say that they hiked it. I think it is it part of the Appalachian Trail that they're hiking? 50 miles? I don't know. Someone, someone who goes to Dartmouth, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I know one of my friends, Isaac, did it over the summer and we were having like a hangout barbecue thing after and one of our friends had to go pick him up and carry him over to a bench because he couldn't walk over to meet us. And of course, this is college. There are going to be like the debaucherous and whatever challenges that are less popular, I would say, because people like me, for example, who don't go around a ton, who don't go hook up with a ton of people are automatically excluded from these. There's like the seven day challenge, which is I think it's just getting drunk going out for seven days of the week, which is a bad idea. And there's also the Dartmouth 7 which I am automatically excluded from, so I'm not even going to talk about it, and if you guys want to learn about it, you'll just have to come to Dartmouth. The last challenge I'm going to talk about is one of probably the most famous ones, I would say. Everyone's like, you got to do this while you're at Dartmouth at some point, and that is the Ludyard Challenge. And I completed this challenge over my sophomore summer, and it is when you strip down naked in the middle of the night and swim across the Connecticut River to Vermont, and then run across the bridge back. And I think this was made because there's some laws like where it's legal to derobe in New Hampshire, but it's illegal to be naked in public, versus in Vermont, it's legal to be naked in public, but it's not legal to derobe. 
I don't remember what it was. I think my trips leader told me that when I was a freshman. But anyways, that is the challenge. And SNS, the safety and security of campus, patrols that area to make sure that kids are not running around naked and trying to swim. Why, you might ask? Because it is freaking dangerous. A lot of people don't talk about this when they're talking about this challenge. It's like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, we almost got caught by SNS. We had to like hide in the bushes naked. Uh, disclaimer is that I was not completely naked when I did it because it was that time of the month, so it would have been a really bad idea. Going to the story of why this is so dangerous and why you need to be a very strong swimmer to try to do this and why SNS patrols and why you should not do it with any kind of substance going on in your body is that it can be very, very difficult to swim across because it's A, a lot further than you would think when you're just looking at it and B, there can be a really strong current. So when I did it over sophomore summer, it was one of the scariest nights of my life because I was with a bunch of friends. Me and I think one other friend were sober Thank God. We were with a bunch of friends that had been drinking. So they were like just out having fun. It was warm weather and everyone's like, oh my gosh, let's just do the letter challenge. Um, but while we were there, once we got to the middle where the current was fastest, we started getting pushed super far down the river at like a ridiculous speed. We were trying to fight the current bad idea, you're gonna get exhausted. And we were starting to make our way past under this bridge, which was just terrifying. Girls were like panicking, pushing through each other, kicking each other, trying to get across. And it was ridiculous. Thankfully, we did make it all the way across. We were panting and exhausted. Um, and as we were trying to make our way across back the bridge to get to our clothes that our friend was watching, SNS shows up and is patrolling. Me and, our, and one of my friends hide. Thankfully, we both weren't completely naked. And we were just like, okay, we're just gonna wait here on the bridge and hope that they don't pass by us and get us and like stop us while we're not wearing clothes because it'd be super embarrassing. Yeah, it was just all around a bad idea. Um, a, a big component of this is that it had rained previously, so there was way more water in the river than usual. It was really high, strong current, and unfortunately, like as we were pa as we were going back up to our house, a group of girls was going down again. They were all just coming from a party, and we we're like, "Don't do it! It's such a bad idea." Um, and they're like, "No, we're gonna do it anyways. Like we're all athletes. We're really strong, like swimmers and stuff." And we we're like, "Okay." The other friend who was sober with me stayed behind to watch, and they had a similar experience of being like, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna die! We're gonna die! We're gonna die!" And she had to coach them through just being like, "Relax. Let the water push you, and you'll make it there eventually." Thank God for Elizabeth. I love her. <laughs> so. That is one of the most overrated challenges at Dartmouth. Obviously not everyone has as terrifying of an experience as I did, but literally I thought that some of us might not make it. Kids could seriously drown, like it's pitch black, you have to make sure that like the people you're in a group with all make it across, and that is why I am so thankful now that SNS patrols that area, because they're like, yo, a kid could just drown in the middle of the night and no one would know. So that is probably a pretty unpopular view, because people are still like, oh my gosh, it's so annoying that SNS patrols that area, and I'm like, well, they're trying to make sure that you don't die, so. It's a give and take, it's a give and take. But anyways, those are my stories about Dartmouth challenges. They definitely have added a lot to my overall college experience, both in good and terrifying ways. Um, but it's something that I really appreciate about Dartmouth. It creates a lot of really strong memories with friends and also just a really tight bond between myself and other alumni. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed just hearing more about my little story time of almost dying in the Ledger Challenge. But um, yeah, I hope you guys were able to learn a little something extra about Dartmouth that you may not have known before. And if you're at a school that has weird challenges or something of the like, comment down below like what school you go to and what the kids are doing over there because I'm super curious. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not yet subscribed already, please be sure to hit that button down below and turn on notifications to join the J team where no one's a bench warmer, everyone's a playmaker. Uh, and if you like to see more from my everyday life, you can follow me on all my social medias, which are down below and just throw on right here for your convenience. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much. I love you, Jesus loves you, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.